Hello everyone, back again to today's first video with you, Jeremy. Friday for today's first video. So as well as on a Friday, I'll be having a detailed look at the weather for month ahead of the Japanese and CFS V2 models. And um, going to take us into the early part of May, of course. Coming up later on today, we're going to have your regular week 10 day video update, including all of the usual features. And I'll be with you later on this afternoon. It's Good Friday today. So thank you so much everybody for tuning in on your Good Friday. Hope you're having Hope you're having a good, good Friday. Um, and uh, I'll get on to a uh, good Friday for you uh, right now. So uh, we're going to begin with the 500 millibar high tsunami flow charts from the North Pole and Arctic view down. Uh, so this is the North Pole of the Arctic just here. This is the wider Arctic circle around there, of course. And mid latitudes around here, UK and Ireland are just there. Uh, these are broken down into weekly periods. The first week period is going to take us from the 10th through to the 17th of April. Red, yellow and orange extrapolate to above average heights and blue to below average heights. Above average heights cause high pressure, blue is low pressure. Uh, so you can see within the week ahead, we've got an area of above average heights, high pressure sitting over the UK and uh, much of Northern Europe as well. There's a deep trough of low pressure in over northeastern parts of America. So it looks pretty cold there with jet stream digging southwards. But for us, we're on the mild side of the ridge and uh, we should have a lot of dry and uh, pretty warm weather coming up in the week ahead. Classic spring conditions. Moving through to week two, there's very little change. This is the 17th through to 24th of uh, April. And again, we see that we've got above average heights sitting more or less over the top of the country. A large ridge of high pressure. Well, average heights away to the north and across eastern parts of America. So it looks pretty cold there. But for us, again, we're on the mild side of jet stream. Pushing the jet stream north was a bit under the ridge of high pressure. Dry and warm weather should continue. Uh, weeks 3 and 4, taking us from the 24th of April through to the 8th of May, uh, looks like this. So it has below average heights away to the north. There's no particular area of above average heights over the UK. So it's a two-weekly anomaly. It could be a little bit transition. The fact that the large area of above average heights that we see in weeks 1 and 2 sort of disappears for weeks three and four tells you that there's probably a bit of a transition going on here something more unsettled so it could be the high pressure still rules the roost of week three by the time you're through to week four the first week of may possibly we go into unsettled conditions and uh, we bring the westerlings in off the atlantic it's a little bit difficult to decide for two weekly anomaly but i would suggest that's probably telling you a little bit more unsettled anyway uh, at some point through that two weekly period this is the tropical and mid-latitude uh, view. So on this view, the British Isles is in the top right-hand corner of the chart. As you are looking at it, a reminder of that uh, week one, 500 millibar height anomaly, with again, high pressure sitting more or less over the top of the country and much of uh, northern Europe as well. Deep trough of low pressure across eastern and northeast parts of America with jet stream digging southwards. But for us, we're on the warm side of the jet stream because we can't see the Arctic, North Pole and Scandinavian view. That's off the chart. But we know what's going on anyway in that area, Greenland view. Uh, because we had a look at that uh, view to start off with. So we're under an area of high pressure for week one, taking us from the 10th to the 17th of uh, April. Means the temperature anomaly is warmer than average. It's uh, warmer than average week to come. Quite significantly so, actually, between around one to uh, three degrees above average, really, across many parts of uh, central and western and northern Europe, anyway. Precipitation on, because we're under a ridge of high pressure, is drier than average, so warm and dry uh, sums it up in the week ahead. Week two maintains a high pressure. This is from the 17th to the 24th of April. Again, the high is sitting over top of the country, so the fine weather continues. Temperature anomalies aren't as high in week two as they are in week one. And we think we're probably still favouring above average temperatures overall, though. And of course, because we're still under high pressure, it remains uh, dry as well. So dry. And I would have thought probably quite warm there for week two also. And then we have that rather strange looking uh, anomaly chart for week three and four, going from the 24th of April to the 8th of May. Just looks like over, we might be transitioning to something uh, a little bit more unsettled, but taking a while to do so. Temperature anomalies are lowering a bit, especially out to the northwest of the country, going a bit colder than average uh, there. So, uh, 
probably average slightly above for most parts of the UK, but certainly there is a lowering of the temperature anomaly taking place there. Still looks reasonably dry, actually. So uh, we can see that... Um, Sort of to our southwest down here, it's quite wet, and out in the Atlantic, it's quite wet. But actually, overall, still relatively dry conditions. So any breakdown to the bridge is probably taking a while. Uh, it's probably taking a while to take place. But I think by the time we get through to early May, we might be in something a bit more unsettled there based on the JMA solution. Let's have a look at CFS V2. So these are 500 bit of our heights that have been broken out into week beers. The first week of beer takes us from the 10th to the 16th of April. The coming week again is dominated by high pressure. High pressure sits over the top of the country, being loads of dry and fine conditions should be warm uh, as well. Week two, very little change. Again, this is the 17th to 23rd of April. The area of above average heights, again, is sitting over top of the country. Deep trough extending through eastern America, you'll see. But uh, for us, on the mild side of the ridge of high pressure, keeping things mainly dry, fine and warm. And the high continues into week three. This is the 24th of April to the 30th, last day of the month. And yes, the above average heights continues to be over the top of the country. But a change to week four, this is the first week of May. It's the 1st to the 7th of May. Then below average heights returning close to the country. Low pressure coming back, jet stream starting to move in from off the Atlantic. So, again, if you was to combine this anomaly that we have here in week three with this anomaly that we have in week four, you will probably come away with neither high pressure or low pressure dominating, which is exactly what we see with the JMA. So I think, actually, they're both in line with one another, which is that we keep lots of high pressure influences going through the rest of April, but we get through to May, and it prob probably turns a bit more unsettled. But, of course, that's four weeks away. It's a very long way out. Temperature anomalies is surface V2 for week 1 from the 10th to the 16th of April. Warmer than average, very substantially so. Although notice that uh, much of North America, Canada and uh, United States really, really plunged into very substantially colder than average uh, temperature anomalies. So I would assume there's going to be some late season snowfalls for parts of America. And uh, this is time of year, of course, when... The contrast between that cold air plunging southwards into the states and the warm air coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, that can kind of fuel tornadoes. So I would think it could be quite an active um, quite an active period in America for storms, thunderstorms, and maybe tornadoes as well. Probably what they don't want, given they're uh, also suffering with coronavirus. But uh, they may have uh, some significant storms and tornadoes to contend with as well in the next few days. We'll have to see, of course. Then we go through to week two, which is the 17th to the 23rd of April. It's even warmer in this week, very, very substantially above average. On the scale, we're up to around three degrees or more above average. So that really is exceptionally warm week being forecast there by, uh, by the CFS of the 17th to 23rd of April. Still cold across much of America, although less so than compared to week one. And then week three, which is the 24 to the 30 of April, keeps those warmer than average temperature anomalies going. And then finally, we get through to week four, which is more unsettled. So you might expect it to be uh, cooling down, but actually the model is still forecasting above average temperatures, even into week four of the first through to the 7th of May. Finally, precipitation, surface V2, so uh, week one, 10th to the 16th of April, that one is coming out substantially dry of an average, which you'd expect with high pressure dominating the weather. Week uh, two is the 17th, 23rd of April, that one also hints at being on the dry of an average side. Week three, reverting to near average precipitation from the 24th to the 30th of April, near normal uh, there. And then week four, it's a very weak signal, but possibly hinting at going a bit wetter for an average from the 1st to the 7th of May, which, of course, is what you'd expect uh, if we've got low pressure replacing high pressure. So it really does look as though high pressure is going to be ruling the roost uh, through the rest of April. Of course, it won't be continuous. We will have periods of more unsettled conditions. We've got one of those periods coming up over this Easter weekend, actually, so it could generate some quite big showers and maybe in some thundery downpours. But overall, the anomalies here are shaping up uh, warmer, drier, and, and more anticyclonic than normal. Uh, for the rest of April. So high pressure rules are roost uh, for April with uh, JMA Friday today. We get through to May and the hints are there, but it could turn more unsettled then through the first week of May. But of course, that's a really long way out. So week four 
So uh, it's not really worth worrying about this stage at the moment. High pressure really does rule the roost for the rest of April. And that brings warm and dry conditions with it too. Uh, right then, so we'll be back later on with your week to 10 day video update, including all of regular features. Come back for that shortly. That's all for now though, and thanks for watching.